Hi, this is Celia from the Marine Foundation. I'm sorry I can't be there today with you, but I would like to present some of our ideas for Work Package 5. Um, the Marine Foundation is a creative organisation and we believe a creative approach is a powerful way to engage people in sustainable solutions to environmental issues. Why eco-art? I don't know, I mean, this image is fantastic. It's actually by Banksy from the Banksy installation in Bristol last year and I think the thing about a visual image is that you don't really need to say very much and yet a huge amount of information enters your mind. I mean, I'm sure you're all having a kind of different reaction to this piece. So the idea is that eco-art provides a highly effective framework to integrate and resynthesize knowledge through the discussion of critical texts drawn from diverse fields and production of collaborative multidisciplinary projects, balancing theory and practice. Um, basically, artists become translators um, we're essentially visual creatures and we can only take in a certain amount of information um, and essentially using the visual language is a much more effective way of um, allowing this information to enter into the human's mind but more importantly enter into the kind of the feeling and emotional responses as well which also influence um, the way that we behave and how we would probably change. Um, so basically, environment data and science is more accessible through visual illustration. In other words, we might learn about the data, but it becomes much easier to process once it has been translated. It's incredibly powerful what we can do through um, through the creative mediums. I mean, here's an amazing piece. This is by a collaboration of a photographer and an artist, and they've created these beautiful costumes and very powerful images. This is another amazing piece. This is a public art piece created using plastic bottles. Um, and this is very much about the fact that we, through environmental art, whether that is a, a, a kind of piece that we decide to do publicly or whether it's something that we do through the education arena. I mean, I personally think that we could do uh, an art piece as a whole through for responsible, but very much through the educational um, arena. Doing an environmental art project with students, whether that's high school students or, or senior school or, or professional artists, um, they basically have to learn about the, the the problem or the issue to then even create the artwork. So essentially, there's a whole forum and, and systems learning where, you know, the effectiveness of environmental art and enabling people to kind of understand it and then process that and then work together and come up with all sorts of different ways to interpret some information is, is a vital part of kind of contemporary literacy. I wanted to go a bit more specifically into how this could apply to some of the key stories. Um, this is the Marine Foundation's art programme. It's called Living Sculptures in the Sea. It's very much applicable to coastal tourism. Um, this is very much about, rather than trying to educate about um, the issues of coastal tourism. This is very much more about providing uh, a positive um, story around um, environmental tourism. This is an area where the habitat has been damaged through various reasons and we're actually using art here to not only restore the habitat but also to create these kind of beautiful artworks. Um, this is another piece where you can see how the, 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 the pieces grow and evolve over time and then the actual the marine life lives around it. What this does is it provides not only an economic incentive for the local people to preserve their environment, but it also provides a visual um, device by which tourists visiting can learn more about the threats that the environment faces, but more importantly, I think, a positive narrative about how this can be um, changed for the positive. This is another just a beautiful piece showing how the piece has grown with all the coral. This is a piece um, around eutrophication. Um, this is clearly a, a very powerful image of the little mermaid and here she is climbing out of the toxic sea. This is another um, artwork that I researched for um, Responsible. This is Baltic Warriors. It's a whole kind of platform around eutrophication in the Baltic using art, people. They're actually going to create a, com a computer game out of this and this is a whole um, very different arena within which to create um, greater awareness within the public but also they're doing these installations with companies and um, it's proving to be a very effective campaign. And this is another beautiful artwork. Um, this is about farming and the about borders which I think is very relevant to um, the issue that we're facing in in, um, key in the key story approach to eutrophication which is that how do we bear in mind that not all the effects that are going to happen are going to happen locally. This is an amazing installation around invasive species. 
um, this is an installation that I think relates more to um, the, the invasive species that we're dealing with in the in our area and this being the zebra mussels I think these are super powerful images of how an everyday um, item can literally be kind of smothered in these creatures and then here's obviously a very different approach more cartoon um, but yet still it's an example of how creativity is used as a, as a visual translator this is a very powerful image I feel for for microplastics here we've got a baby fish that's full of um, little bits of plastic another very strong visual campaign this is obviously kind of more around the ideas of advertising but yet still this is about visual languaging and this is another very powerful campaign around ditch those beads very much about um, social media hashtags and creating a, a movement that's inclusive over Instagram particularly this is another beautiful example of how art can really create new ideas and and feeling around um, a, something new this is renewables here we've got just examples of here that they're painted so they become more visually pleasing color has a huge effect on how people receive things here's another one on the right which is more about light and making them look stunning and almost like a gift to the people around it rather than it becoming something that's just going to be unpleasant maybe it's something that they would actually enjoy and then below is a very famous installation by a fantastic um, artist called Anthony Gormley and is basically now turning these artworks, I mean, the, 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 the turbines into artworks and actually people are now going to come and visit this installation because of the this, this sculpture. So suddenly now we have turbines making energy, but also drawing in tourists um, and providing another way for people to earn money. And this is a very, very successful campaign by photographers. Um, this is obviously for sustainable fisheries. The campaign is called Love Fish and they had various photographers taking beautiful photographs with famous people and it has been hugely successful in terms of raising awareness about fish um, and sustainable fisheries. This is a very different art installation <coughs> using fishing boats <coughs> um, and this again is just an it's interesting example of kind of the whole thing about um, environmental art as well as it, it, it brings different people into collaboration and is very much part of the effectiveness of environmental art in the way that it enables different groups of people to come together and kind of interact in ways that they probably wouldn't before. This piece is um, by a very famous underwater sculpture called Jason DeCarey's Taylor and Head in the Sand. Again, I think a very powerful way of, of, of merging the issues of the ocean and um, a and visual artwork. From a very different approach, um, what we've also done with the Marine Foundation is work with young kids. It's still very much kind of in the format of creativity and the language creativity and visual as a way to engage and educate. This is a program that we've started um, you, for very much for younger children there's a lot of scope in this area in terms of under, educating the under eights and again it's using um, visuals, fun storytelling, adventure and then art as well. It's about engaging, this is a, a little mermaid called Zaza and she has all her friends and she visits them and we take the kids on a, a really sweet journey and they feel inspired and get to know all the animals and learn about the creatures and then we start to kind of move into the more uncomfortable issues and, and through this we allow the, the kids to explore their feelings and their emotions and, and express them. And then through this program we're also encouraging the, them to draw and, and express their own creativity around this. Um, during this time questions can be asked and it's a very enjoyable space of play. And then these are just some of the really fun creations that they've done and I think there's it's not a developed idea, but it, there's a lot of scope um, in this area. So yeah, we go. I just wanted to finish with this quote from Albert Einstein. Look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. Thank you.